Hello ladies and gentlemen, hope you are fine. Today's video is about two important ear conditions. I am your host, Dr. Raja Nadir Jalal. I recommend that you watch this video at least two times. You will find it very informative. And hopefully after watching this video, you will find it very easy to deal with any scenarios with vertigo and dizziness. I'll soon make another video about BPPV, Meniere's disease and acoustic neuroma. So please su uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get notifications about my new interesting videos. Let's start our video presentation. Labyrinthitis and vestibular neuritis are infections that cause inflammation of the inner ear. Patient presents with very similar symptoms, which include persistent vertigo, nausea, maybe vomiting, dizziness, and unbalance. However, there is some difference, which is that in vestibular neuritis, there is no hearing loss, and in labyrinthitis, Along with these symptoms, patient also have hearing loss. And you know why? Let's go to our next slides to find out the answer. Labyrinthitis and vestibular neuritis can affect both adults and children. Vestibular neuritis is more common than labyrinthitis. The structure of the inner ear. The ear has three parts, outer, middle and inner. The inner ear contains a system of fluid filled tubes known as the labyrinth. The labyrinth includes Two parts, one is cochlea which senses sound and is responsible for hearing and vestibular system which senses movement of our head and helps with balance. It consists of the vestibule and the semicircular canals. There is a vestibular nerve which passes through the inner ear taking messages to our brain. You can see in this diagram, on your right, there is a rounded structure which looks like a worm. This is cochlea. And on your left, there are three semicircular tubes, which are semicircular canals. So cochlea on your right, it is responsible for are hearing and these three thin tubes, semicircular canals on the left side, these are responsible for our balance. And on the top, a thick structure, this is vestibular nerve. Vestibular nerve is a part of vestibulocochlear nerve, which is also known as eighth cranial nerve. And uh, it has two parts. One is vestibular part. The other one is the cochlear part. These two parts have entirely different function. 
the vestibular nerve innervates the vestibular system of the inner ear which is responsible for detecting balance whereas the cochlear part of vestibulocochlear nerve innervates the cochlea which serves the sense of hearing so here is our answer in vestibular neuritis only vestibular part of the vestibulocochlear nerve is affected therefore patient has only balance problems along with vertigo nausea and dizziness there is no hearing loss in labyrinthitis actually the whole labyrinth cochlea semicircular canals vestibule the whole labyrinth is affected so patient presents with sensory neural type of deafness along with balance problems vertigo nausea and dizziness as seen in vestibular neuritis causes are similar the most common cause viral infections upper respiratory tract infections because of viruses cold or flu some other viruses such as varicella zoster which causes shingles mumps measles and rubella viruses can also be a cause in some cases these two conditions can also result as a complication of bacterial infection of the middle ear or meningitis bacterial infections causing labyrinthitis or vestibular neuritis are more common in children than in adults that is why we always check hearing of a child who had recovered from meningitis labyrinthitis less commonly can be autoimmune where the immune system mistakenly attacks body's healthy tissue causing inflammation and damage to lab labyrinth system damage to the cochlea can also result as a result of meningitis or circulatory problems or meniere's disease leading to labyrinthitis as we already have discussed to summarize symptoms of vestibular neuritis there is persistent vertigo which is a sensation that things around you are spinning even when you are still and this uh, vertigo lasts for days to weeks patient feels sick or maybe being sick there is dizziness and unsteadiness in case of labyrinthitis all above symptoms but there is also hearing loss sensory neural type can be mild or can be severe enough leading to complete deafness of the affected ear there may also be tinnitus a ringing or hissing sound in the ear patient may or may not have all of these symptoms there can be some other possible symptoms or history of some positive possible symptoms which are related to infectious causes fever runny nose sore throat discharge from the ear 
and nystagmus. Symptoms usually come on suddenly, for example, on waking up in the morning or any time during the course of the day. These symptoms of vertigo and sickness may be bad enough, making it difficult for the patient to get out of bed. Usually these symptoms get better within a few days, but sometimes continue for several weeks. In case of labyrinthitis, usually hearing loss gets back to normal afterwards. Occasionally, permanent hearing loss in the affected ear may result. There are many other causes of vertigo and hearing loss, so we have to differentiate them from these two conditions. For example, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. In this, vertigo and dizziness are episodic and symptoms last only for a few seconds always less than one minute and are triggered by a change in head position. A test called Halpix test is positive and helps to differentiate it from other conditions, short duration and triggered by a change in head position indicates towards BPPV. Another important differential is Meniere's disease. In this, there are repeated episodes of vertigo, which last for minutes to hours, always more than 20 minutes. There is hearing loss, which is fluctuating, sometimes less, sometimes more, and it is for low frequency sounds. Patient may also have a sense of fullness in the ear. Patient may also have low pitch tinnitus that is ringing sound in the ear. Third import, important differential is acoustic neuroma, which is benign tumor of vestibular cochlear nerve. There is unilateral gradual high frequency hearing loss. Difficulty is in hearing on the telephone on the affected ear. This is a common complaint by the patient. If the, the tumor is small, then hearing test may be normal. If tumor is large, patient may have diplopia, facial numbness, and very rarely weakness or loss of muscle movements on the affected site. MRI will confirm a tumor involving the vestibulo cochlear nerve. We should also keep in mind trauma. Temporal bone fracture can also cause hearing loss, which is of progressive nature. So take a history of recent head trauma. MRI and CT scan are helpful to identify any malformation of the inner ear. Some other differential posterior fossa, cerebrovascular accident, leading to different range of symptoms, ataxia, dysarthria, dysphagia, hoarseness, facial paralysis, facial numbness, contralateral lower extremity weakness, sensory neural hearing loss. Romberg test is negative. CT MRI will confirm the diagnosis. Don't forget multiple sclerosis. Symptoms are often asymmetric and involve only one side of the body or one limb. Mild dragging of the foot and spasticity are often present in, such, in these patients. And MRI reveals demyelinating lesions. Then labyrinthine hemorrhage can also be a cause. 
Presentation is similar to labyrinthitis. MRI is diagnostic. And lastly, temporal bone neoplasm. There is a retro tympanic mass. Symptoms of facial nerve paresis or lower cranial nerve deficits. And MRI or CT scan of the head will show tumor. How to diagnose labyrinthitis and vestibular neuritis? Usually from the symptoms, from the history without any other tests. Key questions in the history which you need to ask. When you notice these symptoms? How long they last? How much they are affecting your usual activities and other medical problems you have had in the past? Any medicines you are taking or any change in your medications? And since when these symptoms started? How these symptoms started? And any history of recent infection? Relevant examinations which you have to perform are checking temperature for any infection, then pulse for any arrhythmia and blood pressure, lying and standing to check for postural hypotension, which can be a cause of vertigo and dizziness. Ear examination is very important. Otoscopy for signs of inflammation and infection in the outer or middle ear. Eye examination for diplopia and nystagmus. Test for balance and hearing like Romberg test, gait, tandem gait, and hearing test like Rainey and Weber test. For BPPV, you can perform Dix-Halpix maneuver. It is called positive if on moving the patient's head into certain positions. Dizziness, vertigo and nystagmus are triggered. If diagnosis in, in doubt, then referral to a specialist for further evaluation and to rule out other causes of persistent vertigo and hearing loss. A ENT specialist and an, an audio vestibular specialist who specializes in conditions that affect hearing and balance problem. Refer to them. They may do a range of special Test to check hearing and balance, MRI scan or a CT scan. How to treat these conditions? Vestibular neuritis, most people can be treated at home with self-help measures and prescribed medicine to control their symptoms. Occasionally, if patient is having severe vomiting, may need to be admitted for IV fluids or IV medicines. If vertigo and balance problems do not clear up after around six weeks, referral to a physiotherapist for vestibular rehabilitation therapy. In case of labyrinthitis, Particularly if there is significant hair loss, straight away referral to a specialist doctor because immediate treatment is needed to stop hearing loss getting any worse. In both conditions, self-help measures, bed rest when vertigo and sickness are at their worst. Symptoms may come and go during recovery. 
especially if the patient is feeling tired or catches a cold. So bed rest is very important. During an attack of vertigo, advise the patient to lie still and close eyes until the symptoms go away. And be active as soon as possible. First, start to have short walks inside the house. And when these symptoms start settling down, and patient finds it, it a bit easier to move around then they can go out with accompanied with someone to have a walk around the house and this will help to recover more quickly it's important to keep fluid levels up by drinking plenty of water little by little but more frequently if especially if patient is being sick. It's very important to avoid drinking alcohol during recovery and avoid visiting busy places such as supermarkets, shopping malls and busy roads during recovery period to avoid visually distracting stimuli such as bright lights and loud noises. Some medicines can be used for bad vertigo, nausea and vomiting. These are used to ease symptoms and include prochlorparazine, beta-histin dihydrochloride or antihistamines, but these should be used for short term, otherwise may slow down recovery. These medicines, some of these medicines can cause drowsiness, so the patient shouldn't drive cycle or operate machinery while taking them even if vertigo seems better some other medication can be used in special circumstances for example if labyrinthitis causes severe sudden hearing loss a short course of high dose steroid tablets can be used to reduce inflammation and if the underlying cause is bacterial middle ear infection, then antibiotics can be prescribed. A few words about vestibular rehabilitation therapy, which is done for chronic vestibular neuritis, which is if a patient still feels dizzy and unsteady after many weeks and months, then referral for vestibular rehabilitation therapy is done to a, th a physiotherapist. They perform specially designed exercises on the patient to train the brain to use the signals from eyes, joints and muscles to compensate for the confusing information coming from the affected inner ear. And these uh, uh, exercises help with balance and walking and make everyday activities easier in the beginning the patient may feel more unsteady but it is important to continue these exercises and the patient will get better over time complications can be like delayed recovery some people continue to feel unsteady even after the initial spinning and dizziness have gone away and this can last a long time, weeks or even months, the patient is more likely to fall over. Sometimes severe bacterial labyrinthitis can cause permanent hearing loss and lasting damage to the balance system. There are some precautions uh, regarding these conditions. Patient should not drive or operate machinery while they have symptoms or are taking medicines for their symptoms. And if symptoms get worse or they develop new symptoms, then they should immediately contact their GPs. Uh, this is a disclaimer, you can read it. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.
please don't forget to prescribe my channel and uh, to press the bell icon for more interesting videos on my youtube channel thank you and bye bye